to Scott Hall's family, friends, and fans, my deepest condolences to you. We have lost a father, a friend, and one of the greatest game-changing wrestlers of all time. This is my super cool story of meeting and befriending Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon. I hope that as we all go through the grieving process, you find some comfort and humor in the stories I'm about to share. The bad boys are wrestling Testing competition Win the war That's their mission Not no mercy See the race like the street If you don't know You better find out The war pack Here to prove a point Number one Best believe That you don't want To test with them I'll be here for them Come in the ring With them You're never walking out again There's a saying out there Don't try to meet Your hero or role model You will only be disappointed But I'm so glad That I took that gamble And decided to meet Scott Hall in 2009 which opened up the doors to a two-year friendship and a spot on the Scott Hall web crew. I, I just wow, this is Max Ray from ScottHallTV.com. Yes, sir, it is. How are you doing? Um, you know, you know me, Maggie. I'm up and down. <laughs> I know. So I'm there. I, I just wanted to, to drop in and tell everybody to check out your new site. You know, we've made it really friendly user. Uh, right. I mean, Maggie, you and Lenny are like a bomb, and I've got hundreds of dolls sent at the door and I sat down the other day when I still had that camera you sent me and I filmed me signing I signed a bunch of pictures and stuff they're all in a box I got all well, you stuff. Have stuff at the stuff I've got like office. thousands I've got thousands of action figures out there for fans who want them I'm going to sit here and sign them all and I'm going to film myself signing them and stuff I want to do more like I want to participate, like these, this other lady called and said, what about this website stuff? She, Maggie, you know how I feel about it. I don't want a computer because I have you and Lenny and stuff. I don't need one. I got Gene up there in New York and stuff. I don't need one, but I got Rico. If you're listening, amigo, I'm sorry. I miss you. I don't know. I want to reach out to the fans in a way that I can, and so I'm not going to ever sit down and type anything out to you. I'm not going to blog to you or whatever, but I will send you a cool-ass little video if I can. That clip was uh, taken off of In Your Head Wrestling, uh, which is like a call-in website, the, an interview that Scott did you know, back in February 2010. Even though that is pretty you know, airy to, to hear, basically what I want to kind of get across, the stories I want to tell, it's going to be a little Tarantino-ish. It's going to be a little all over the board. Um, probably going to start with the last part of the story first kind of a thing. And um, so when I was part of the, the Scott Hall web crew, uh, what was really cool about Scott and what, you know, made me feel real good about doing that and, uh, or being a part of that uh, was the way, you know, he treated me. So, you know, I felt very honored to kind of hold that position or thing that I was doing for them, um, which I'll get into in a little bit. But what I first want to kind of go over is, you know, I had a uh, back surgery in 2008 and I wasn't, you know, I, I'd be in commission, out of commission. Um, you know, I'd be going, th- experiencing a lot of pain and he knew that. Uh, and so he would call me, you know, like once every 10 days, once every couple of weeks and, you know, just check in. And it's kind of funny when he first started calling me, he would, uh, you know, like, Hey yo, this is Lenny. Is this is Lenny. I'm like, yeah, Scott. What's up? He's like, this is Scott Hall. <laughs> and, you know, how you doing? How's the back? Just want to say, um, you know, thank you so much for uh, doing what you do, and I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, how how is everything? You know, and we sit there and we talk. You know, five ten minutes. Sometimes it was very brief, and other times we would talk. Uh, you know, I remember we had a conversation about parlaying. You know, hit me, you know, potentially parlaying his wrestling mic skills, you know, maybe doing some kind of like stand up comedy or like, a, you know, a wrestling show comedy where, you know, I, I think I've seen like Roddy Piper and Jake Roberts do things where they just kind of go on stage and just tell stories. And I mean, you know, he could definitely handle himself as far as, uh, 
you know, any hecklers or anything like that. That's for sure. So, but we, I remember just in, in depth, just, you know, having a conversation about that. And then, uh, I remember we were talking about old, old injuries and kind of really didn't talk much about wrestling. Um, he definitely was like, you know, we would have conversations about just memorabilia in, in general a little bit. Like I remember him, I remember telling him, I was like, Hey man, you know, the packet of photos and stuff that you sent up. I said, just so you know, I said, if, if you have any more of the WCW, the black and white glossies, I was like, those are, you know, those are worth more. Or if you have the WWF ones or WWE ones, um, <clears throat> you know, those black and white glossies are worth more than just a regular print offs or copies of copies. I said, those are original ones. I have heard or seen videos of him talking about that you know that particular glossy eight by ten and letting people know that that one is worth money so he was listening um and we i remember also talking about inscriptions and things like that like you know because i remember him like when we did a signing together uh the first time i met him kind of was like you know he saw i had a um a ladder match uh photo of him razor ramon and him holding the two titles up so he signed it, Razor Ramon. I was like, but I was like, can you add a AKA? Yeah. I, well, he started to sign. He's like, how do you want to sign? I said, can you write, you know, Scott Hall, AKA Razor Ramon? He's like, well, why would you, why would you just want me to sign a Razor? He's like, cause I was Razor there. I said, like, yeah. I said, but in the memorabilia world, if you carry, you know, an extra name, people want like your real name and then you know the character that you played underneath it's like typically how it goes and it's kind of funny because when i was collecting his memorabilia prior to even meeting him you know i would go on ebay or i would find stuff at shows and there's not there wasn't a lot of his stuff out there he didn't do a lot of signings and uh you know that's pretty much that's what it was he never really did the aka until till i kind of started talking to him about it yeah anybody that has anything that signed you know scott hall aka razor ramon you're welcome so, but yeah, so going back to just, you know, the phone calls and stuff. And then, and then what was cool was he would probably text me maybe like once a week or something like that. And, uh, the text would just like, sup, bro. It was the text, sup, bro. I would, you know, and I knew that you knew what was going on, but I would just like lie and I would say stupid stuff like, uh, Hey, I'm just, uh, watching, keeping up with the Kardashians and drinking a Pinot Grigio. And, you know, I'm not going to repeat some of the things that he said back because it's just, you know, derogatory jokes and whatever. But, um, but you know, he would write after the, the, the remarks, he would write like, all right, you know, well, you know, are you, uh, is it one pinky off of the, the wine glass when you're taking a sip, you know, like that kind of stuff. And, you know, I was just setting myself up for, uh, for all this, uh, you know, ribbing and jokes and things. And, I remember another time, like, you know, same thing. He's like, you know, sup, bro? And I'm like, oh, I'm just on my way to a hot yoga class. And he, like, write question mark, question mark, question mark. And then he's like, Are any hot chicks there? I was like, no, nah, I had to sign up for, like, a 60, 60 and over, you know, male class. And I was just, like, barfing, like, ah, you know, whatever. So um, so we would joke around a lot. And, um, you know, my takeaway from that time and in doing – you know, being a part of that whole Scott Hall web crew, I mean, he was very including. Uh, if you were in, you were in with him. And um, man, I was, it was such an honor to uh, to work with the guy that was basically my favorite, favorite wrestler. And, and if you knew me in 2009, 2010, I was beaming with, with that badge of honor. Like, yeah, Scott Hall TV, man, we're, this is, this, I, I work with this guy. Like, this is, this is cool. So um, it, it, it just, brought I had such a good feeling about about doing that so Scott thank you man I mean you know you, you may you know you didn't have to but you know you took time out of your day out and out of your schedule to call me during that run and uh, multiple 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 times and text me and and I can't thank you enough for that uh, but having other now just going back you know going back to how I actually met Scott and and you know actually kind of getting on to the Scott Hall web crew team it was just, it was luck. And I mean, just right place, right time. And uh, I guess I'll set it up like this. At the time that Scott started doing appearances, you know, it, he kind of, he, 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 it was wise of him to do so 
because he was at a point where, um, and he said it in his in his uh, 2007 video with with uh, you know the RF video Feinstein, which by the way the first shoot interview uh, RF video uh, Rob Feinstein was probably one of the best interviews I've ever seen. You know, shoot interview from from a wrestler uh, because he was so engaging, and you know sometimes you get people that kind of remember just their side of the story and it could come off as very not factual. My takeaway from that was it was all very factual. Um, you know, he wasn't lying through his teeth. You see some wrestlers that just, they just lie and, or again, maybe it's just their perception um, of what happened you know, to them. But it seemed like when they did some fact checking, even when there was with, uh, you know, Kev and Scott, they did another one together uh, called the outsiders. <laughs> and, um, they would you they would fact check uh like kev might have said something that he might have remembered differently but then when they went when they went to actually check the facts it went to scott and scott you know kind of confirmed that that's how that's how it happened so amazing video but anyway so at the time scott was looking to do more appearances you know he wasn't able to live the lifestyle that he that he was living you know previously so uh in the video i think he said he made some bad investments and, and this and that so now he's starting to do appearances or he's just starting to. And uh, I had had, I had, uh, I think just about everybody can probably relate to me on this uh, with what happened to them in the past two years with the pandemic and the shutdown and people were forced to stay at home. Well, there was a huge wave of like the power of nostalgia is what I call it. And I had that back in the early to mid 2000s. I, I mean, I was in my um, late 20s and I just remember kind of saying like, you know, what you know what made me happy as a kid and you know wrestling always kind of came up um but my most fondest memories of wrestling was uh the you know the monday night wars and how i was drawn into that being that i never i think you know after the uh, the ladder match and and whatever and uh, you know i was getting ready to graduate high school and all that other stuff and i wasn't really paying attention to wrestling it got very cartoonish and i think it was uh I don't know what I don't I, there was no football going on cuz I think it was in June and the whole thing where Scott came down from the crowd uh I just happened to turn it on and I was like oh cool wrestling on a Monday night I was like all right you know let's let's do it so actually my mom was there my brother was there and we were just watching it and Scott Hall came down from the crowd and we all know that story but that was hook line and sinker cuz it was like next week Kev came and you know it just was it was an amazing amazing run and then actually dripping back over to see what was going on with raw and um you know the rock and and uh kane and um you know stone cold so dx it was just it was just a great great time in wrestling and uh that's what made me happy and then I just I just singling out Scott Hall as one of my favorite performers and anyways I got a little off track there but and that was kind of like the beginning of what I want to do, which would have been at the end, but we're going to, we're going to keep uh, pushing through here. So uh, anyway, so I started collecting his memorabilia and yeah, I had like, you know, I don't know, a couple eight by tens and, and things like that. It was tough to find. Again, he didn't do that many signings. He didn't have to, cause he didn't need the money. Kevin was showing up all over the place, Kevin Nash. So you could, you were able to get him pretty easily, even though I hadn't gotten really of any of his stuff yet. So how I met Scott the first time was just incredible. PJ Polacco was having a 2009 icons of pro wrestling in Cromwell, Connecticut. It, that was on a Sunday, August 2nd. He was having a bunch of wrestlers come in like Terry Funk, uh, giant Silva. I think the Patriot was going to be there, but Scott was definitely like the headliner. So it was being advertised and I had, uh, had reached out to uh i thought it was pj at the time but it actually ended up being you know pj's either co-business partner or handler in in this younger guy named nate and so i reached out and said hey i would like if scott's going to come and i don't know if he's going to get there the day before i would love to do a little bit of a private signing with scott i have like you know 40 50 items i'd like to get done what would your what would your price be so Nate messaged me back and said something ridiculous. It was like $5 an autograph. And I'm like, okay, let me just back the truck up on this. So I think I spent like, 
I don't know, 400, you know, 400 dollars to get, uh, you know, it's something like 80 autographs or something like that. And, and I had to go out and buy like I didn't have like eight by tens or whatever ready. Uh, I bought some stock eight by tens from them. But like I had to go out and I went out and buy. I said, you know what? I'm going to do baseballs. I'm going to have five bucks. I was like, I'm just going to do a ton. And he hasn't done signings in a while. And this is great. So Nate's like, okay, well, you know, you got to PayPal me the money. So now I'm like, all right. So now I'm forwarding the money. It's in good faith. I've done some backroom signings before with uh, JPRS, the, you know, the, the baseball card shows, but nothing in, in like this and in, in wrestling. So as we're getting closer to the date, you know, Nate's like kind of nervous texting me saying like, I don't know if Scott's going to make it, but if he doesn't, we'll definitely refund you your money. And now I'm just like, Oh my God, this is crazy. Cause I was like ordering more product. And I'm like, this is, I, I was walking into the whole thing, extremely nervous, um, is becoming almost borderline sketchy. Cause it was like down by the day. We didn't know if Scott was actually going to get on this plane. And as a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, might have missed the first one and had to get on a second one. So ultimately, I ended up going up to this. Uh, I don't know if it was a uh, was it the Marriott. Uh, it might have been like a. It might have been. It was definitely a hotel um, where they did the signing and they had the banquet hall and stuff like that. So the way it was going to go down was, I had my stuff, and we were going to go meet up at a. a at one of the hotel rooms and you know, I was going to lay everything out. Scott was going to come in and do the signing. So I had already paid I'm sitting in the lobby and this young guy who looks like he's 12 comes up to me and he's like, Hey, I'm Nate. And I'm like, you're Nate. And he's like, yeah, I was like, how old are you? He's like, I don't know. I think he said 17 or 18. I was like, all right, well, you know, whatever. He knew his stuff though, man. He was, he was, uh, he was, he was good. So he's like, this, this is all the stuff you're going to sign. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, but I, I don't know if you have any stock eight by tens. I got to pick a couple of those up. He's like, yeah, no problem. So he gets me those. And then PJ comes by. Now I never met PJ before. And, uh, so I stand up, shake his hand. He's like, Hey man, he's like, how are you? You know? And I was like, I'm good. I was like, you know, from one show promoter to another, I was like, how are you feeling? I was like, a little nervous. He's like, Oh my God, dude. I'm just like, he's like, I just need to you know, he's like, we, we got a wrestling event tonight, you know, this and that and whatever an appearance. Like, Oh, that's cool. So, uh, he's like, so you're here to meet Scott. And I was like, yeah. So, uh, he's like, all right, well hang tight. He's like, you should be here soon. So they finally bring me up to the, uh, hotel room. And, um, so I have everything kind of laid out on the desk and I'm sitting down next to the desk and I'm just like waiting. Like, I'm like, Oh my God, I was like, I'm going to meet my hero. Like, this is going to be great. So, um, He's there. Nate's like, you know, it's probably like in, you know, probably an extra 15 or 20 minutes or so. It's like, Scott's just taking a shower. He'll, you know, he'll be here in, you know, a couple minutes. I'm like, all right, cool. So um, he uh, comes in, comes to the door. And I mean, listen, I'm 6'8. And I think at the time I was might like 265 or something like that. But my God, man, that guy filled up a doorway. So he comes walking in and he's like, hey, I'm Scott Hall. How you doing? And I stand up and I go to shake his hand. He's like, whoa, you're a big fucker. <laughs> you know? And we just start laughing and stuff. And um, actually, before before Scott came in, PJ's wife, uh, I think her name is Jill. She came in. Nate was there. So we're all kind of there, just kind of hanging out, waiting for Scott to come in. I think PJ actually ended up bringing you know, Scott in. And Jill was like, you got a lot of stuff to to get signed, huh? And she's like... She's like, you're doing that because you want to hang out with him for a little while, huh? And I was like, of course, <laughs> you know. So he comes in and, you know, we just, so he starts signing and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of like directing him because on some of the baseballs, I had him do like, you know, red ball point pen and Scott Hall and then, uh, you know, hey, yo, in black or, or reverse or something like that. Uh, so I had him, I was doing, I was having him do some like just really unique stuff nothing nothing that he's done like that before and he actually had a hard time holding the base man he's like i can't hold the baseball he's like my my hands are just like they're not i was like okay i was like we'll put him in the box and you could hold the box and then you could sign the ball that way and uh so he was like okay that's cool he's like i love the idea with the pens by the way he's like with the black and the red he's like i think that's really cool i said and we just started talking and i was like you know nothing like 
you know, ballpoint pen on, on just a leather baseball. It's really, really cool. So then, uh, that's when we started talking about like the Scott Hall, um, you know, Scott Hall, AKA Razor Ramon. And I had him do some extra inscriptions. So I was actually like getting free inscriptions too. Um, he didn't care. And we were, he was actually sharing stories. Like I know he's been on record as far as saying this. So, um, you could find it in a just incredible interview, but he was talking about, uh, bringing in, you know, PJ, uh, from the click and, you know, just kind of like riding with him and stuff like that. And he was telling me the story of how they went out drinking one night and, you know, PJ drank so much, they didn't fall down the stairs. He fell up the stairs and everybody got a big, big laugh out of that. And, um, and I also brought some things for him to look at just to kind of like, you know, I had a photo uh, that was signed by Kurt Henning and, you know, and he was in it. And so he was actually able to complete that with his signature, which was really, really cool. And then I had some stuff in my collection. And so he's flipping through the binder of like all the eight by tens I have. And he comes up to this, uh, magazine that's got, you know, big Scott Hall and Kurt Henning on it, but it was signed by Scott already. And it just, he's like, look at the mustache on that, you know, and, and, you know, everybody in the, in the room, you know, Nate, PJ and Joe were, were all laughing like really hard. And uh, I think I have a picture of it. So I'm going to, I'll post it in the, uh, in the timeline there. But so then, you know, I started asking him questions and probing him stuff. He absolutely loves to tell the putting over Chris Jericho in, in Philadelphia because he, he was telling me about that. But then I would, I was kind of asking him, you know, I wanted to ask him other things that I didn't know because I mean, that was like a long two and a half hour, three hour video. Uh, and he had said a lot of stuff and, and I know there's obviously more things, but I remember asking him, um, as far as like, you know, punching and stuff like that, I said, Scott, you know, like, you know, you would watch other wrestlers and, you know, they would throw like, you know, a big working shot, stomp the foot and they would hit like the top of the head and it would, they'd use their forearm fist, whatever, you know, sometimes they would use the, the side of the fist, uh, to make like the rock, the rock was a great puncher too. And he made a great sound when he connected with the guy's face, but he did a lot of, um, it's almost kind of like a slap. It was like the inside of his fist, um, where Scott came at you head on. And I think because his fists were so big and the connection to the face, it made a sound. But I said, dude, was, I was like, how, how were you able to practice like those kind of punches? And, you know, I was like, were you, did you ever piss anybody off with as far as like, you know, hitting them? And, uh, he's like, bro, he's like, if you can't take a punch in this business, he's like, you don't belong in wrestling. But he said that, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but not a lot of guys punched like you. You know, they get you, you know, I mean, if you ever watch like Ric Flair, he puts you in the corner and like, you know, he goes to punch you in the ribs and like, you could just see that he's not even hitting you. You know, this, this is like, you know, I don't care if it's 40 or 50% of an actual punch. I mean, that's still pretty impressive. So, uh, and he, you know, would, when he threw his arm into somebody and, and, you know, would make that connection with his fist to the face, uh, you, you got that sound. And I mean, he definitely laid it in, that's for sure. Um, so that was one of the things that always impressed me about Scott Hall, like Kevin Nash, because, you know, their size was there, their wrestling ability was there, but they made it come off as being very real. Um, you know, I don't care. You take a power bomb from Kevin Nash. I don't care if the thing's made of pillows, like that's still going to hurt, <laughs> you know? So, um, same thing with a razor's edge. I mean, it, you know, it's just, it's all very cool and believable stuff. And that's part of the reason why I was, you know, really drawn into that, that era. So we're getting through the signing and I were kind of wrapping things up. And I remember Scott saying, he's like, well, he's like, you know, we got the appearance tonight. He's like, he's like, you coming, you're going to be there. And I didn't know about it, uh, until PJ said something that, you know, to me downstairs, and I wasn't sure if Scott was like inviting me to go with them, which would have been cool. I didn't press it. PJ kind of shot me a look. I didn't know PJ at all yet. I kind of befriended him a little bit later on where we, where we were able to do uh, some appearances down in my you know, Stratford car show. I'm sure if we had that relationship, you know, that six months to a year later relationship, then he probably would have said, dude, just hop in with us and, and go. Like, I don't think there would have been a problem at all, but I, he kind of gave me a little bit of a look like, you know, don't ask us to bring you, you know what I mean? And actually I kind of had plans that night. So, so I just, you know, I was like, nah, I was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, I didn't know you guys were doing that. And, uh, if 
I guess it, it was it, uh, Scott had talked about it before. I think in another uh, in your head um, interview, actually it wasn't an in your head video. It was it was in uh, 2009, and they talked about his that entrance that night um, or the finish was he was in a, a cop car, a cop car S, big SUV. And the Wolfpack music came on and he came in after, you know, a bunch of guys got worked and stuff like that. I guess Terry Funk worked that night and whatever. And uh, he actually ended up getting to do the finish to whoever it was in the ring. And it was it was a pretty cool entrance and a big deal, especially for him to bring it up in the in the next thing. Because it was just, you know, how often does the thing get interrupted with a, a police escorted vehicle or whatever? So, you know, so it's just kind of neat how that all ties in. Uh, together even though I didn't get to see it but but um but anyways when we got ready to part ways I didn't know if I'd ever see Scott again and I and I got up and I shook his hand and I I practiced this over and over my head because I wanted him to know when I shook his hand I said you know I remember going to car shows when I was a kid and my uh, my uh, I had a couple of friends fathers bring them with me and uh, one of my friends fathers got to meet Mickey Mantle and get an autograph and shake his hand and he was absolutely elated and beaming for the whole rest of the day. And I just wanted to let you, you know, let you know that that's how I feel right now. Thank you very much for taking care of me and all this stuff here. And he was like, wow, thanks, man. He's like, that means a lot to me, man. He's like, I'm glad. He's like, I had a really good time talking stories and stuff. And he's like, thank you. So they ended up leaving. And... You know, I get home. I'm getting ready to go out that night. Uh, I'm just supposed to go to, like, a little party or whatever. And I'm like, motherfucker. I was like, I, I didn't get a picture with him. I'm like, <laughs> I was so starstruck. I didn't get a picture with him. So I was like, damn it. Now, so I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to get up early and go there. You know, I went, went back to the show, uh, to Cromwell, because the show wasn't that Saturday. That was just a private signing. They had to go do the wrestling appearance, and then they were going to go next morning. Uh, you know, you know, sign a bunch of stuff and have have the people come in. So because they took such good care of me, you know, I went and I saw Nate at the entrance, and I said, Nate, I said I forgot to get a picture with Scott. He's like, I'll take care of you. I said, Listen, man. I said, you guys were so good to me. I go, what? what I go, I don't want a free picture. I said, what do we got here? He's like, so I started looking at the thing. I said, this is the all VIP pass. It's a hundred bucks. I said, give me that. So I grabbed the all VIP pass. Um, I got to walk around the show. I got to hang around, get some photos. I got I met Terry Funk, which was really cool. Um, got a picture with a giant Silva. I was like, damn, this this guy is pretty big. I think he was like six, 11, seven feet. Definitely a couple, you know, for me being six, eight, it's definitely uh, interesting to see people when they're, you know, when they're taller than you. And I definitely wanted to see how I was going to measure up, you know, to Scott. Uh, like I said, when, when I met him in the hotel room, he was kind of like, he wasn't really working out much during those days. So he wasn't, you know, his shoulders weren't really drawn back and, you know, he's billed at six, seven, but you know, he's probably like six, five, six, six. And, you know, we were pretty much eye to eye, but, um, but he was definitely a little bit, you know, a little bit shorter than me. So, so then, so that morning I'm, I'm, you know, running around, I'm just talking to people and, and I'm waiting for Scott to come and he was running a little late, had a nice big breakfast, whatever. And he goes in and sits down and, um, you know, and I was, the, I, I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, I can't stay all day though. That's the thing. So Nate put me in the front of the line and, you know, I was like, Scott, I'm just here to grab a picture. He's like, he's like, Hey man, he's like, what's going on? He's like, dude, you should have been there last night. Should have been there. It was, we rocked the house. And I was like, I wish I was man, but I was out partying it up myself. So, but I got a really cool picture and I'll post that in the, in the timeline with him where I'm actually like behind him. I got the wolf pack, you know, the, the, the wolf pack ears up and, uh, you know, he's just kind of, you know, in front of me and stuff. And, um, such a great feeling to meet you know, your favorite wrestler of all time. It just, it just, it's awesome. Uh, and the crazy thing is I was there, I heard there was a good, uh, good outcome. Uh, I actually ran into PJ when I left and, you know, as like I said, one show promoter to another, I, I ran, you know, small Sunday shows and once in a while I had autograph guests, nothing like a production that, you know, he had put on and he just had this whole like sigh of relief. He's like, man, he's like, the people came, He's like, this is awesome. He's like, you know, thank you for everything. And I was like, no, man, thank you. So now <laughs> I did, uh, I, you know, at, you know, had multiple conversations with Nate later on because we were doing some things where I was buying out some old inventory that they had. And um, 
I said, hey, I was like, how much of that money did you give Scott? You know, I was like, five dollars an autograph. I was like, how much? He's like, I'm pretty sure we didn't give him any. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> I was like, if that's the and now I'm not saying because look, Scott and PJ are friends. And I think Scott initially came up as like, you know, he got paid to come up, but he didn't have to pay the full amount. He did it at the, you know, the friend price, right? And I think Scott just wanted to see him have a successful show. So I don't know if it was just like, look, man, we got to cover your expenses. This guy is going to cover it. And, you know, we don't know how good of or bad of a turnout it's going to be. So, you know, that could have been it. And I, this is not, I'm not saying this to, you know, throw PJ under the bus or anything like that. Um, you know, but I, the reason why I am bringing it up is because typically, you know, a guy is not going to sit in a hotel room and sign a ton of stuff in the back room for free. So it just goes to show you, and he didn't have, he was happy to do it. And, and that's the point that I wanted to bring up. Like he, I mean, if he didn't, first of all, if he did get paid, it wasn't a ton of money. It was like, you know, 400, 500 bucks, something like that. Um, and if he didn't get a dime of it, it just goes to show you that he was just there. He was happy. We were trading stories. We're all laughing. And it was such a good time. Uh, it really, really was. And that was my that was my first meeting with Scott. Good. I got all that off my chest. <laughs> so I think I got it all. Um, how it kind of, how that meeting kind of tied in to meeting my friend Maggie was I took all that stuff and there's this like website that not a lot of people, I mean, some, most people, most guys might will remember it, but you know, I was on MySpace. Like it was, MySpace was like before Facebook and there, well, there, just about everybody had one for a very s small amount of time. So I took my photos and you, you, it's your space, your own cyberspace. And, you know, you can do wallpaper and, and, you know, do a bunch of photos and put music to it and have a rotation. And I did that with all my stuff. And so, and I think I was already a member of like the Scott Hall fan group. So at, like when you post new things, like, you know, it kind of shows and people could check it out and it's like, wow, this guy's got incredible autographed memorabilia uh all over his page and uh and so i remember you know talking to to maggie about that and um you know she was like wow that's you and you got to meet scott and i was like yeah she's like you know i think through some fan there was a, a previous like low budgeted like website that she was kind of like a part of and um so she actually had some interactions, I think, with Scott either around that time or before then. She's like, I only got to talk to him on the phone. You get to meet him. That's so great. You know, I was like, you're going to meet him at some point. He'll, he'll do some. If he's going to be doing appearances like this, you're going to you're going to run into him at some point. You know, so the next time I met him, he was. Don Marie. Yes. This weekend, I'm going to be in Secaucus, New Jersey, at some kind of signing deal, sign a mania or something, right? Are you going to be there? Yes, I'm going to be there this weekend. I hear you're going to be there. Too. To so that was another clip from In Your Head uh, Wrestling uh, website, and that was his next appearance, and that was Secaucus, New Jersey. And that was in 2009. That was uh, August 29th, 09. So it was really – it was later that month. I literally saw him later that month. And so I actually had acquired other, eight, like, newer 8x10s and – so what I did was, is I had, well, one of the reasons why I ended up going is there was a friend of mine who would, had a, um, he was going through a second bout, uh, with cancer. And so, and Scott was one of his favorite wrestlers too. And so I said, you know, it'd be pretty cool if I got him a nice, you know, personalized, uh, autograph, uh, eight by 10. So, uh, I put the eight by 10, well, I get down to Caucus, New Jersey, and so I get down there, and I'm looking at the venue, and I'm like, it was like a, it was so weird. It was like a rented out, abandoned office building, and it was, you know, there were wrestlers there. Uh, there was TV personalities there, like Larry Storch was like at every single one of, uh, you know, look up Larry Storch. I don't even know what show he was on, but I know he was at every one of these like little events. But the way it was so clunky on how it worked so like the there were dealers selling you know 
could be Star Wars action figures, wrestling action figures, whatever. And there was just tables of it. And they were all lined up in the hallway. And then, but the talent, they have them in like the office offices, like, you know, behind tables and stuff like that. So I got down there early. I was probably one of the first people to get there. And actually my impression was that he didn't do that well at the show until I was actually trying to research some sound bites and stuff like that. And somebody actually posted a clip of the show and it, that it was actually rocking that, that signing that he was doing was, was rocking. Um, you know, I think if you just type in Secaucus and Scott Hall, Secaucus, it'll come up on YouTube and you know, you see just a whole crowd of people. Not only do you see a whole crowd of people of him there, but like <laughs> Virgil and, Ted DiBiase are there and the guy happened to catch a camera shot, um, you know, video of Virgil trying to push an action figure of him on one of the kids. And the kid was like, I don't want your action figure. <laughs> so, but yeah, it turned out to, it turned out to be a pretty good rocking show. And I think he had an appearance that night. Uh, his handler was going to take him to, um, you know, Pennsylvania or something. If I remember that correctly. Um, but on the in your head promotion that Scott was trying to do the sign of mania actually was another appearance that he did later on. I don't know the date actually, it was probably sometime in September or maybe early October, but that was in Pennsylvania. That wasn't sign of mania. That was, uh, I don't know what, what that production was called. It's just like Secaucus, New Jersey signing or something like that. So anyways, I get there and um, so I put the, for my friend, I said, Hey Scott, how you doing? And I had at that time, I had the walk on the edge t-shirt, which was a black shirt, silhouette razors face on the shirt and, you know, a silver, uh, razor on the back. And it said, what, you know, walk on the edge, pretty cool shirt. It was actually pretty badass. I, I, I liked that shirt a lot. And so I was there, I had some other eight by tens, a couple of other things that, you know, a couple of, uh, unfinished pieces that were signed that were signed by other people but that he needed to sign. So, um, the promoter kind of took care of me. I think I, I think I had to pay like $15 a piece or something like that, which wasn't bad at all. So with my, with my buddy, Scott, he, uh, I put, I put the photo, I said, Hey man, he's going through this, you know, rough time. I was like, could you just, you know, make something kind of cool and, you know, inscribe it, inscribe something cool to him. And so he wrote, you know, Hey, yo, Scott, keep fighting Chico. Scott Hall, you know, AK Razor Ramon. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then we had, so then there was nobody there in the morning. So I get to hang out and talk with him for like another, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And, and we were just, you know, I, I know the I mean, one question I remember specifically asking was what it was like to work with Walter Payton. Um, I think he, I don't know, I can't remember if it was a survivor series or, or which, which one it was, but he was like, yo, he's like, yeah, he's like, I don't get, he's like, I don't get asked that too often. Um, he's like, he was a really nice guy. He was really good to us. He was just, he was fun. He really loved wrestling. And he told me that, you know, Walter Payton gave him a bear signed Jersey that he had hanging up in his son's room for a while, but I'm pretty sure that he actually grabbed it and wore it. Um, because I think Peyton passed away in 99 and if I'm not mistaken, I know there, uh, right around where Walter Payton passed, WCW showed up in Chicago and Scott Hall came out in a bears Jersey, but not only did he come out in the bears Jersey, it was a Walter Payton Jersey, but he also had it tucked into his jeans and not too many guys can pull off a tucked in Jersey into the jeans, but Scott, Scott was able to pull that off. He was able to pull off you know, a denim vest with a denim jeans. So he, uh, he definitely was able to pull that off, but, uh, not, not too many other people would have been able to do that. Um, but he was like, yeah, he's like, I still have it. And, uh, he's like, it was, it was hanging up in my son's room for forever. So, um, he was really, really good, really good to us. So, so that was kind of cool. And then after that, I don't think I met anybody else there. I think I just got my stuff and, you know, hung out for 20, you know, grab breakfast on the way home and just headed home, added more stuff to the page and, you know, talked about my experience and stuff like that. And then the third, third and last time that I, that I got to see and meet Scott face to face was at the Sinomania thing in Pennsylvania. And that was where X-Pac 
and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were all there. There were other wrestlers there like Raven. Dawn Marie was there too. And, you know, there were some other people as well. I'm sure Virgil was there too. But I remember, so I called the promoter and I said, listen, I'm going to come down. And since you have all three, it'd be really cool to get like, you know, five or six baseball bats signed. I would, I had this thing where I was going to do, you know, index cards with, uh, you know, all in different pens. So I was going to do X-Pac with inscribed suck it uh, in green pen, you know, Scott Hall in red and Kevin Nash in black, like staggered. And I, I have a photo of that too, that I'm, I'll try to squeeze in, in this uh, montage here. And so I call the promoter and I say, Hey, what can you do for me in bulk pricing? And this is the only time it kind of backfired on me. So remember in the beginning of, of what we were talking about here, as far as uh, there's a saying, don't try to meet your hero or role model. You'll only be disappointed. Uh, that is a saying that is out there, by the way. And, and it, it, listen, it could be true. You know, um, it, I've, I've heard some horror stories. I have a friend that was a huge Cardinals fan, had a horrible experience with, uh, with Bob Gibson. Tara, I've felt so bad for, for my friend. And it was all because he wasn't in line like other, you know, people. He was invited by, you know, the promoters in the back because he was such a big fan and he just did not get treated well. And it was, it was awful. So this was kind of like, it wasn't the worst experience, but, you know, basically I get down there, try to get down there early, but I think they were already signing. So I ended up, the guy, the promoter was like, look, man, we're going to have to do your stuff at the end, at the very end. So like, he's like, so you're going to have to hang out. And I was like, all right. So I pay him the money and I'm just hanging out and I'm just walking around. Don Marie grabs me and, you know, <laughs> gets a photo thing out of me. So it was 20 bucks to do a photo with her. I was like, I can't say no. Cause she's, you know, putting them in my face. And so now I'm like, there was like a break. And so I'm, I'm kind of standing off to the side and I think I don't quote me on this, but I think like X-Pac might've been smoking cigarettes or something. So they, so they were outside and they came back in and I happened to be standing there and Scott came up to me and he's like, yo, Lenny, what's up? You know? And I was like, Hey, what's going on? He's like, Oh, I love the shirt, bro. Because I had a red X-Pac shirt on and I just, so an X-Pac was with Scott and I was like, yeah, well, you know, I just wanted to wear the t-shirt of the guy that carried all the matches. And, and so <laughs> Sean just exploded. It was like, Oh, you know, and Scott's like, man, he's like, you would have never known that if you didn't watch the RF video, he's like, I already know. He's like, you Mickey Mark, you know, and he's like, kind of whatever. He's like, well, he's like, what's going on? I was like, well, I got some stuff for you guys to sign at the end. I said, the promoter's making me just like wait and hang out. So, you know, whatever. So I'm here. So I, you guys want water or something, just let me know. And he's like, yeah, oh, man, this is cool. He's like, we'll see you at the end. And I was like, all right. So they go back doing their thing and I wait and wait and wait. So I'm getting ready to lay my stuff out and Kev gets up goes over to the promoter who's like, you know, probably six or seven feet away off to the side and was like, dude, what, what the F man, I got to get out of here. I got to, I got to fight to catch, you know, and I, what's, what's going on with this. And I don't know if it was again, if just, if, if they weren't getting a piece of it, uh, you know, I didn't want to make a seven footer, <laughs> you know, angry and whatever. And, and I, you know, so now here's the perception, right? So now I'm kind of doing it. I'm in with the promoters thing. I have a big batch of stuff. Scott, you know, obviously like, you know, I met him two times before, but it's not like he's going to tell Kev like, oh yeah, like, you know, he just does a lot of stuff. He's a big fan. So, you know, I'm with, I'm trying to get everything, uh, you know, ready for them to sign. I had baseball bats, I had the index cards. I think I wanted them, uh, Kev and uh, Six to, uh signed the baseballs that Scott had signed. So, uh, yeah, I spent like, you know, I don't want to, I don't remember what it was, but it was like 600 bucks or something like that. And, um, so especially at 15 a piece that adds up pretty quick, six, 700, something, something plus I had to drive down and back. So I have six and Scott sign the bats first and I get him over to Kevin. Now Kevin's sitting down, it's a little steam. And I'm like, dude, I was like, listen, man, I'm sorry. I don't want to, if you don't want to do this, I was like, just go, you know what I mean? I, I'm sorry, but you know, I don't want to make you upset or anything. I, I, you are like one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And he just kind of sit there and he took a deep breath and he just went, he's like, 
these guys don't even know how to sign a baseball bat. So he grabs the bat, and there is like a there's like a sweet spot on the bat, and the the logo is kind of like where the autograph is supposed to go. And X Pac just grabbed it and just signed off a chunk off of a side, and Scott kind of did the same thing. And you know, so even when I, when I took the photos of the bats, their names are like there's only three signatures on the bat, and they're like all over the place. Um, but Kev, you know, he's like he's like this is how you sign a bat, you know. And I was like, all right, that's cool. Whew. You know, but I didn't dare ask for a picture with the three of us. I just, you know, he signed, he got up, he's like, thank you. And then he left. And so, um, Scott was like, what do you guys, he's like, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, oh, I got to head back to Connecticut. I was like, why, what, what you got going on? He's like, I don't know. We're supposed to go do some sort of appearance somewhere. He's like, I don't even know. I was like, all right, man. Well, cool. We'll, we'll talk to you later. He's like, all right, man, take care. So that was the last time I saw Scott. Um, it was very cool to see all three of them together. Uh, it I say this story the way that I said it as far as, you know, it kind of backfired on me. Yes, I got the autographs that I wanted. But again, my perception to Kevin was like, oh, this guy is just going to buy stuff and resell it and whatever. And yeah, that's the case. But I'm also a huge fan. So, so, um, and a lot of stuff actually ultimately to get things going kind of started, it, you know, ended up in Scott's, you know, on his website anyways so so anyways after all these meetings you know with scott and then just kind of going back and loading things up you know maggie and i became closer friends and things finally came down to the point where they were you know they were looking to like you know make a really nice website the website that they were using before i think it was like a off of a free thing maggie says listen i you know i really want to do something cool and I would love your input. And if you want to be a part of this, you know, let me know. I was like, sign me up, you know, because at that time I was just kind of buying and selling cars part time. And, um, I think I was actually getting paid to stay home because of my back and stuff like that. So I really, you know, it was, it was totally fine. I had the time to do it. I had the knowledge to do it. And I was, I was happy to share my knowledge with them to make everything as cool as I can. So she's like, do you know anybody that can build a website? I was like, yes, I do. The guy that built the website, his guy's name is Rick. He's in Seymour, Connecticut, or was at Seymour, in Seymour, Connecticut at the time. Uh, he built out this really cool site for the time. It wasn't cheap. I mean, they have, you know, I don't know if it's Square, Squarespace or something like that now that, you know, everything kind of looks cool and it's formatted and it's easy use. But back then, wasn't wasn't so easy. So, um, but they did it really cool because they took all these great graphics and designs. Looking back at it, the site was a little dark. But, um, but it was cool. It was cutting edge cool. And the people loved it. People that came and found the site, they loved it. And it incorporated, um, it was a very, as Maggie said before, you know, user friendly site. And so what was cool about it was, is we had all the bios, we had the, the booking area. Um, but also Scott was promoting, you know, scotthalltv.com. Now it started off, I think is the outsider scotthall.com. And then it changed over to scotthalltv.com, much easier name to type in. Right. Um, and this, I think when he was, when he was doing his last call with Scott Hall series on YouTube. And so we had it set up where anytime a video got loaded up on YouTube, it would go to the site. And so it would have, you know, double exposure. And then the, how we sold the merchandise was it wasn't like a link to an eBay store. It was a, it was a format that was like, you know, again, mostly in black and white and silver and, and whatever, and just really good graphics. But it like, it was like a masked eBay thing. So you, they would buy something, not even knowing that it was coming off of eBay. And it was pretty cool. Um, and I, in my position there or, you know, working with uh, Scott and Maggie was basically, uh, get, you know, getting the inventory help, you know, well, helping out ideas with the site and, and, uh, and ideas for the merchandise and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, like the, another t-shirt that we sold was a Scott Hall TV, uh, yeah, Scott Hall TV.com. But it was like in the font of the outsiders in red on a black t-shirt. So we sold those shirts, yeah, coffee mugs and, you know, keychains and, uh, whatever. So anybody that purchased anything, you know, they would get, you know, the business cards and things like that. And Scott, as you, you know, heard in the opening interview there, he, you know, he was always pumping the site. So he would call in and, hey, go to scotthalltv.com, you know, for bookings, this and that. And also, you know, as far as uh, 
if you go back and you listen to the opening again, that open interview that Scott did, where he gave us like some just really awesome shout outs. And as I'm kind of wrapping this up here, uh, just really happy that I found that and I have that. But um, because it kind of adds validity <laughs> you know, to my story. Uh, but basically, uh, <clears throat> you know, he talks about the, the merchandise. So he actually ended up shipping the merchandise to me. And so the signed Razor Ramon, you know, dolls and the, uh, the eight by tens and, uh, just all that stuff. He sent it to me and I ended up, my job was to get it all listed onto eBay, which again, it was mar- uh, it mirrored onto the Scott Hall TV site. And anybody that's listed that, you know, is listening to this, you know, if you bought anything from Scott Hall TV back in 2009, 2010, that was all legit stuff. You know, I, uh, you know, had a conversation, uh, you know, kind of took a little trip down memory lane. I still keep in touch with, with Maggie here and there. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to say was that she did a lot of stuff, something that should be pointed out, but she did a lot of good, good stuff, uh, for Scott, you know, she's an amazing person and I'm glad that she was there for him when, uh, when he needed somebody. And again, I'm glad that, you know, she picked me out of anybody to help with, you know, that whole, that whole project, um, you know, ultimately on a sad note, you know, um, things happen and, you know, the site became no more. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate because, uh, if you follow Scott's timeline and you go, you look at, you know, the end of 2010 going into 2011, which is about the time that I lost contact with him. That's when Scott was heading into, you know, his darkest times. And, um, fortunately Scott ran into his darkest times, as you could see by the E60 series and, um, or what could have been his darkest times. And, uh, you know, fortunately DDP was there at the end to help him out. Uh, for the last, you know, 10 years of his life. And I think, you know, it's one, it's one thing to live an extra 10 years, but it's another, it's the way of, it's the way of life. And, um, you know, so I was just very, very grateful for DDP for that. I'm very grateful for Maggie for helping him out for those couple years that she did. So, um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, I would like to close out the show with a clip. Um, but before I do that, you know, I hope that some of these stories will kind of make you laugh a little bit. I'm glad to share these. And there's going to be a lot of people that I know that had no idea that I was involved with the, with the whole Scott Hall web crew and everything. And um, maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll do something where if I get enough people interested, if you want to reach out to me on CardCast at gmail that's c-a-r-d-k-a-s-t at gmail.com and you have stories or memories that you want to share about the bad guy you know it's good to talk about stuff like that and it's 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 the celebration of of his life now that he is no longer with us and obviously you know a lot of thoughts and prayer I, I couldn't stop thinking about scott for the past three days him and his family so um three four days so um you know Lots of lots of prayers and thoughts go out to, to their family. And like I said, if uh, if you uh, if you have some interesting stories you want to reach out to me, maybe we could do something. That would be cool. Uh, but on that note, we're gonna leave it leave it like this. Before the rattlesnake, before DX, before the rock, one man proved that it could be good. To be the bad guy. Say hello to Razor Ramon, El Jefe. When that music played, got that machismo going. Hey, Razor, what happened to you last night? He knew he was the man. Get out of here. Adios. I was always a big fan of Razor Ramon. Just push kids in the fountains and just being awesome. I cleared the table for you, man. The toothpick, the way he held himself. It was just magic. Something happened to this boy. Something going to happen to you, man. Came and called himself the bad guy, acted like a bad guy, but people loved him. He actually made it cool to be the bad guy. Nobody beats the bad guy. You can see that he's left. I think it's really cool that the bad guy's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. Look at me now.
Standing ovation for Razor Ramon. Congratulations as he joins the WWE Hall of Fame. That is absolutely awesome. Going to be so great to see Razor Ramon, the bad guy.